Hello lovely people, so this right here is my spoiler review of The Hunger Games Michael J Part 2. I already did my spoiler free review, if you want to see that, that's on my channel, the link is in the description below. But for right now, let's talk about Michael J Part 2 in spoiler form. So this is a warning, and I'm also doing this so I can further go into detail about what I liked about the film and what I didn't like about the film. So after all, uh, the other Hunger Games movies that I reviewed, they were all spoilers, so... Again, this is a spoiler review, so if you haven't seen Michael J. Part 2, put this on your watch later list, go see the movie, and then come back and watch this. You have been warned. Alright, so as you know, as I said in my spoiler free review, I said that the way the movie started, it was all abrupt. And what I mean is, like, we see the Lionsgate logo and then the color draft. I forgot what, what this is. The, the second logo comes up, and the next thing you know, boom, just cut to the next shot of what would come after the last movie. And we see Katniss, she's in she's in a hospital bed, and the nurse, she's taking off that neck brace off of her after she was uh, near choked to death by PETA, who was a little brainwashed into killing Katniss whenever he sees her. Here we see, here we see the nurse, she's trying to get her to talk, trying to make sure her neck is all there, and Katniss, she's all like, My name is Katniss Everdeen, I'm from District 12. Then we cut to Peter, he's still trapped in the chair, and they say in prim in, which is a ballsy move because he could potentially get her, but he doesn't, you know, he's all calm with her, and he, and he actually knows who Prim is, and he's still a little brainwashed, she's trying to convince her, Katniss, she is the enemy, guys, come on, you can't do this, you can't trust Katniss, and then, you know, he starts going buck wild, and... And, you know, he's still against Katniss, and Katniss, she sees this. But I just like that, you know, it threw the movie off for a leap, and it was, I feel like it was a good, great way to start the second part of the story. And it also kind of set the tone for this film. After this, you know, the revolution, it continues to start, you know, Katniss, she's go, she goes to District 2 to get them to come, and then we see that. And then, you know, they're trying to shoot a propaganda for them, and then they see that train of people in, in, in 2 coming. And, and at this point, everyone is getting to believe they don't know who they can trust. Because we don't know if the people in District 2 are with them or against them. And then everyone's putting their guns at each other, and then Katniss just comes out, I know we're talking about. For the first time, turn your weapons to the Capitol. Turn your weapons to President Snow. And then, pfft, like, that came out of nowhere. Katniss gets shot, and... Now, of course, you know Katniss is not dead. She's gonna make it to the end of the movie. But it was a little abrupt. Now, real quick, Donald Sutherland as President Snow, I actually liked him a lot in this film. And it's like, this is President Snow at his finest. And he is 12 steps ahead of the revolution. Because, as I said, you know, President Snow, he's all like, oh, y'all want to rebel against me? All right, you're dead. And, you know, he's setting traps all throughout the capital to make sure no one tries to defy him or get near him or whatever. And he is all confident about it. Like, he's one of those villains that he's not over the top and he's not all mad. He's just there like... Looks like we got ourselves a little problem, and it needs to be solved. Another thing that I felt was a little out of left field for him, but at the same time, it was like, understandable, and I guess it was in the book. As you know, you know, President Snow, he's doing his little easy E cough, otherwise his cancer coughing, and he's starting to bleed or whatever. And throughout the film, he's like, <coughs> you know, one of his mates come in, and he's, and he's at his desk, he's like this. And then, and then he's all like, I suppose you have more satisfying concerns other than an old man's health. And that's why I was like, yep, President Snow, he is that confident. But yeah, Donald Sutherland, he kills it in these movies as President Snow. Now, the middle part of the movie is the war aspect of it. And I'd say, like, there is, I have fun moments in this movie doing that part, but there are also moments in that part that slowed the movie down, and it was because of the pacing. Now, Katniss, she has her team together. It's called the Star Squad, which consists of her camera crew from the first part of the story. And then she got Gale and Fennec with, with her. And then Peeta, he eventually comes along. Box is with her. And I actually love Box a lot more in this movie than I did the first movie, though I love Box in the first part. But Box, he kind of moralizes himself in Katniss, and, and he has a lot of faith in her. And that's why it was a lot heartbreaking when he died. And that's one of the things that I thought was really, really unexpected. And having, like, didn't see that coming. So, you know, hey, in true, in true, but hey, in true horror movie and regular movie form, the black guy always dies first. <laughs> but it was a little heartbreaking for Box to go out first, and he even gives Katniss a little hologram thing that she has to carry around and was assigned to her. Jackson, she's not sure if she can trust Katniss or whatever, but she does. And even Peta, he's starting to come there, but he's not all the way there to the point where when they're when doing that scene, um, shit starts to hit the fan and Peta attacks Katniss, but then Finnick he comes to her rescue and then 
and then Peter snaps out of it. And then Peter, he's even starting to doubt myself, like, if I snap like that again, I need you to kill me. And then Gail's like, don't worry, I'll do it myself. And I was like, wow, what, Gail? Yeah. Another thing that I forgot to mention in my other review is the whole love triangle between Katniss, Gail, and Peter. And that one, that was starting to get a little repetitive and kind of starting in Twilight territory. But they, I felt like they didn't get too much into it that they neatly resolved it. And I always thought, you know, Katniss and Peter, I thought those two were going to be in game and not Gail. Though Gail is more good looking than Peter, but hey. But pretty much while they're going through the apocalyptic capital, capital presence so he set up all these pods which are pretty much traps and they're all made by these game makers so pretty much this is pretty much a super hunger games and everyone has to survive through them but back to the whole love triangle thing yeah gail i actually liked him more in this movie and he was a lot more funny but at the same time because you know they kept teasing katniss and gail and then you can tell gail he was really really getting jealous to the point where when he said don't worry i'll kill you myself it's like Okay, now you're not even jealous, you're just being a dick. <laughs> and again, I like the, like the way they developed Peter in this movie. You know, he's sitting there with Katniss and they're having those small talks and, you know, he's all like, your favorite color is... Your favorite color. I forgot Katniss' favorite color all of a sudden. But your favorite color is this. Is it real? And then she's like, yes. And then, you know, you know, he's starting to remember little pieces. He's just, he's just asking, was this real? Was this real? And then, you know, he's just getting all these hints and he's starting to starting to believe himself again and he's starting to believe what's real that's one of the things i loved about peter in this movie and how they're starting to develop his character again and then when they get to that second sequence where they're in the sewers and they fight those i am legend zombie knockoffs it was very tense and i'll even tell you because i saw this movie in imax and i was just sitting there and i knew what jump scare was com coming and i had a hope that i'd squeeze my can of mountain dew waiting for it to come but luckily it didn't scare me that much but it was tense but it's also another scene that broke my heart because Finnick dies and I just and you know in the beginning of the movie Finnick he's reunited with Annie and they get married and now he's dead like you killed off one of the cool characters and then even after that you know Jackson she dies and more of the camera crew dies while they're trying to get out of that little tunnel and then they meet with Tigress which definitely took me out of the movie a little bit because it was like who the fuck is this? And then and then they try to justify what Cat is saying. Oh, I remember you. You were my wardrobe manager in the first Hunger Games. <laughs> Anyways, Cat, she tells the truth that she tricked everyone into doing this, but they all don't care because they ultimately know why they're doing this. Up until the point where they do one last hurrah to get to President Snow's when is when President Snow he asks everyone in the capital to come to his mansion. And then her and Gail, they hide themselves in these coats trying to get to him. But then a bomb goes off made by Gail. And then all hell breaks loose and to the point where all the kids are forward. And then Prim was amongst one of them. That's one of the parts where I really didn't really didn't understand. Like, why is Prim with them in the first place? Last time I checked, she was in 13, so I don't know. But this was also the part where I actually knew about. And yes, Prim dies. That's the part where I said in my spoiler-free review, I said I looked up in, I think it was after the second or third movie, I looked up Prim and what's in-game for her, and, it's, and, on week, and according to Wikipedia, it said, yes, Prim is going to die. I'm like, oh, no, 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 no more, no more, sorry. But Prim does die. And I just hate the fact that they really glossed over that. Like, there was no emotional attention. Like, Katniss, she's in the hospital bed, and she's with her mother, and the two of them, they barely acknowledge that. They really acknowledge that. They just glossed over it. And I heard that it was like that in the books, but still, that's what the movie's for. He's supposed to adapt it for the book and make it better. Like, let's talk about President Carmen quick. Now, again, you know, she's played by Julianne Moore. She's good in the role, but at, but I like the fact that, you know, she, Katniss, she doesn't know if she should trust her, and everyone's giving her hints that Kat, that President Carmen, at this point, she's doing whatever she can to, to overthrow President Snow. And even if that means manipulating Katniss into doing something, and I guess to a certain degree throwing Prim in the mix. But I, but I like it at the end, they kind of tease because it's like, did President Coin really do that for real or did she not do it? So, but I will say it was a big bait and switch for her character though because it's like, President Coin, she saw her in part one, she was kind of optimistic, she was willing to do whatever she can to help Katniss be the monkey jay or whatever and now all of a sudden, and now she's doing whatever she can to get Katniss to do what she needs her to do. I'll talk more about President Coy in, in a little bit, though. Now we get now we get Plutarch in the movie. He's played by Philip Seymour Hoffman, which I was surprised they used more of him in this movie because, again, they said that he he only had two scenes left for 
Mocky J Part 2. But by the time they got to them, Philip Seymour Hoffman had passed. And I even read that director Francis Lawrence, he wasn't going to give him the Paul Walker treatment and have a body double for him and superimpose his head onto the body double. But apparently they did it, and it was very noticeable. And to the point where it was like, okay, we can clearly see that. And, it's, and he doesn't even say anything in the movie. He's just nothing, I guess. But in any case, it was cool to see Plutarch in more of this movie, though. So I say I say good send-off for Philip Seymour Hoffman. But again, what slowed this movie down was pretty much the middle part because all the stuff in between, even though I kind of appreciate it though, but it did still slow the movie down between all the action scenes and they really could have cut it down. But the ending is, I really felt they kind of didn't deliver on because we were expecting some big epic battle for everyone going against the Capitol. Now granted, they didn't do that in the books, but still, again, that's what adapting the book is for and they didn't do that at all. So it was a lit, so the big, so the big climax was a bit underwhelming. So now we get to the big ending, where President Coyne, she makes her uh, interim president. And she's, and she's in that meeting with the remaining victors from all the previous Hungry Games. And she decides, alright, we need to have an execution ceremony for President Snow. And then she wants to hold a Hunger Games to remind people not to do this ever again or whatever. But beforehand, President Snow, he told Katniss when he visited her, Do you really think I would do that? I am not above killing children or whatever. Don't you think President Coyne would have done that? And he... He, see, President Snow, he had to get one last hurrah in before he went out. He manipulated Katniss into killing President Coyne. At that, at that execution ceremony, President Snow, he's all tied up. Katniss, she has a bow and arrow. She's about to kill him. But then she aims at President Coyne, shoots it at her. And now, <laughs> And then everyone is all appalled that she did that. And then... And then everyone goes to attack President Snow, and then President Snow, he just goes out like, like, <laughs> His cancer cough comes in. Like, is that like President Snow saying, I may be dying, but at least I got one last hurrah before I win out. Because it's like, in a sense, President Snow won, but at the same time, he didn't win. And so, and so Katniss, she is contained, she's taken into that little room, and clearly this was a scene that, that was meant for Plutarch, but again, Philip Seymour Hoffman, he died. So they have Woody Harrelson come in and he tells her, Katniss is going to be exiled for a little while until it's time, and until then, the Capitol will be rebuilding, it will have, it will have a free election and deciding who the new president. So Amy, I mean, she takes Katniss back to District 12, which is still damaged, but she's there all by herself, and again, this is the scene where I'm talking about, the ending. Now, again, the whole President Coin stuff, I'm fine with that, but it's the stuff after that, they just kept going and going and going. And I'm like, all right, you can end now. And it's like, you know, they, sh they should have cut this down. You know, Katniss, she's, she's in her old home, and she sees the old fat cat that Prim used to had, and she's all yelling at him, like, Prim is gone! Get out of here! She's throwing stuff at him, but then she's realized what she's doing. She starts breaking down and crying, and she pets the cat, and then Katniss, she goes out hunting hunting birds, and then Peter, he comes back, he starting, starts planting plants for her, and then he brings her a prime rose for her, reminding her of Prim, and then I just like that, that little bit at the very end, though, where they're in bed together, and Peter asks, do you love me, real or not real, and then Katniss says yes, and then it cuts, and that's where I thought the film was going to end, but no, we cut to a couple of years, Katniss and Peter, they have, ki they have kids together, and Katniss and Peter, they have kids together, and Katniss, she's on the hill holding her newborn child, and she's giving them a slight monologue talking about there are worse games there that can be played, and then boom, that's the end of the movie. Look, I can go on forever talking about this movie, but ultimately the biggest problem with this movie is that it's based on an average size book that was split into two, and that was the problem with it. Now, even though that is a problem with the movie, like I said, like I said, I could watch both of them together because if I watch part one, I'm going straight into part two. Both of them are irrelevant without each other, so together it's a good A plus full price movie. But, but if we were to solve this problem, here's how I would do it. Alright, so you got the first movie, which was more of a political thriller. The second one was more of a war movie. If you put them both together, you cut down on some of the propaganda stuff in the first movie, and then shortly mark the middle part of the movie, which is all the war stuff, which is essentially the climax of the movie, you then have a well-balanced, entertaining movie that works. You'd have a well-balanced three-movie trilogy. And that's how they should have made the story and not cut it into two parts. But you know, they're following the Harry Potter trend. It all started with Harry Potter, they did it with Twilight, they did it with Hobbit, and now they're doing it here. And you know the only reason they're doing it is because of cha-ching! But again, all in all, 
That being said, you can still watch this as a Hunger Games movie. You watch part two with part one together. The first one is more of a political thriller. The second one is more of a war movie. You put them both together, I'd say it's pretty entertaining. But if you watch them separate, they're irrelevant without one another. So that's my take on Mockingjay Part 2. All in all, I'd say it was pretty fun going through these movies. And I'd say this is not my favorite franchise based on a YA novel. But I'd say it's up there. Like, for me, it's Harry Potter, then it's Hunger Games. So I'd say this was... This was a pretty fun ride, and I probably own the first three Hunger Games movies on Blu-ray. I will I can't wait till part two comes out on Blu-ray, and I'd say this is a pretty good movie to have in my collection. And like I said, part two was a pretty satisfying ending to the Hunger Games saga, and I'd say they wrapped every, all the characters and all their stories up pretty good. So I guess this is the last of the Hunger Games, but we all know they're probably gonna make more. Like they'll probably make a prequel, or they'll probably continue on from this story and see what happens. It's like the aftermath of this particular story, but. Who knows, we'll see, maybe they won't make any more. They might just keep it at four movies like a good responsible studio should. But hey, it's whatever. But, uh, but I will say, if, if they would make a prequel, I'd say make a prequel like showing how the Capitol came to be and the whole District 13 getting bombed because of Bell against the Capitol. Like make a prequel about that era of the, of the Hunger Games movies. And so that we can see how did we get here as a society in this universe. But as of right now, I'd say I do pretty much love these movies. I like Harry Potter more, but I'd say it's up there with Harry Potter, so. What do you think of the Hunger Games movies? Do you like them? Do you hate them? Do you like some of them? Do you hate some of them? What And where do you rate some of them? Like, right now, my least favorite is the first movie. I do like Mikey J Part 1, and then, and then right now I'm conflicted. Like, what do I like more? Do I like Catching Fire more, or do I like Mikey J Part 2 more? Like, but right now, I'd say I like Catching Fire is my favorite. But a couple of months from now, my opinion on Maki J Part 2 might change. So it might be number one. So I don't know, but it, it changes from time to time. But that's where I rate these. So that's my question. Have you, if you like the Hunger Games movies, what do you rate each movie? Let me know in the comments section below. Guys, thank you so much for watching. So now I'm done reviewing Hunger Games movies. So now I got left is Creed. I'm going to do a spoiler-free review of that and a spoiler review of that movie as well. And then after that, Return of the Jedi, and then finally, The Force Awakens. So be on the lookout for those reviews. That's it for the day. If you like what you see, subscribe to this channel, subscribe to my other channel. The links are in the description below. And be sure to follow me on Facebook, Twitter, Tumblr, Instagram, MoviePilot, and Periscope. Peace.